You may have already heard about this phenomenon called the loudness war. And basically, louder music sounds better to the human ear. And by using a mastering limiter, you can make the music sound much louder than it was without the limiter. And unfortunately, there's so much of it going on right now that, in my opinion, music is actually starting to sound worse. Because the louder you make the music, the less dynamic range the music has. And let me show you what I mean. We're going to look at loudness over the past few decades. So to do that, I'm going to be in the audio file workspace and I'm going to open four contemporary pieces of music. It's all rock and roll music. And so what I'm going to do is click on the little open icon. I'm going to choose open and I'm going to load up by holding down the command button these four audio examples. Now what we have here, I'm just going to reorder these a little bit, and you'll notice that I can have multiple audio files loaded into the audio file workspace and just click on the tab to choose the one that I want to edit. And what I have here are four different songs, and they're all from different eras. Now, copyright and karma are going to make it impossible to play any of these songs because these are all copywritten songs by major artists. So we can't hear what's going on, but what we can do is analyze the loudness of each of these files. Now, this first audio file is the song Time from Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And this is the 1984 example. So what we're looking at here is the original analog master transferred to digital in 1984. So this is a mid-70s recording placed into a digital format in 1984. And to determine the loudness of this particular audio file, I'm going to go under the Analysis pull-down menu and select Global Analysis, or you'll notice that the keyboard shortcut is the Y key. So actually, I'm just going to type the Y button on my Mac keyboard. And now the Global Analysis window will appear, and it has five different tabs across the top of the window. Now, the peak volume, in other words, how loud the file ever gets as far as its maximum volume, is not really going to be useful for us. It is going to be important to do a global analysis when you receive a file for mastering from one of your clients to make sure that the peaks never went above 0 dB. So I'm going to leave it on the peaks tab for just a moment and click analyze and very quickly WaveLab is going to go through and it's going to show me that the maximum volume that ever gets hit in this particular song is minus 6.3 dB on the left channel and minus 6.1 dB on the right. So when this file was mastered from the analog tape to digital, they made sure that they had about 6 dB of headroom. So they still have from minus 6 all the way up to 0 dB, which is clipping, uh, as headroom for this particular project. And that's fine. But as far as the loudness war goes, if we click on the loudness tab, what we're really looking for is the average volume. Now, let me talk about average volume for a moment. This is also known as RMS, or root mean squared volume. It all means the same thing, but it differs in peak volume because the average volume is this stuff that's in the waveform in the center, not on the extremes of the waveform. I'm going to close the analysis window for just a moment and show you what I mean. The peak volume is measured from top to bottom, but the thicker a waveform gets, the louder our human ear perceives it to be. So that's what a mastering limiter does, is it makes things sound louder without actually raising the peak volume. Instead, it raises the average volume. But now let's go back to that global analysis window and reanalyze the audio and just talk about these numbers a little bit more. The average volume on the left channel is minus 19.9 dB, and the average volume on the right channel is just slightly louder, 19.29 dB. 
So that means that this particular song has about 20 decibels of dynamic range. It's a very, very wide dynamic range. It contains very soft elements and very loud elements. So now I'm going to close the analysis window and I'm going to go from the 1984 original transfer of that song to the 2003 remaster. Watch what happens. You can see that in the overview and the audio file, window that the waveform looks not only taller but thicker. There's more thickness inside of the waveform. Now what does that mean as far as average volume? Well I'm going to type Y to get to our global analysis window. I'm going to click analyze and it's going to go through and let's look at the loudness of the average volume. You can see that what was in the previous version about minus 19 or minus 20 dB, suddenly the average volume has come up to minus 12 dB. In fact, it's minus 12.87 on the left channel and minus 12.54 on the right. So this file sounds louder than the same song that was mastered almost 20 years prior. The average volume has come up about 8 dB. So this file sounds louder and actually sounds pretty good, I think. But that's an example of how the loudness has changed from 19, from basically 1975 all the way up to about 2003. Now let's move on to a couple of other contemporary examples. Here is Katy Perry's Fireworks from 2010. Let's do a global analysis on this file. I'm going to type Y to get to my global analysis window and hit analyze. Now the average volume on this song is minus 9 dB below zero and all about the same on the right channel. That means that there's only 9 decibels of difference between the loudest and the softest thing that you hear in this song. So the dynamic range is getting narrower and in my opinion it's sounding worse. Now, let's do the same thing with a great band, a great song, The Black Keys. This is Lonely Boy from 2011. And let's do a global analysis. I'm going to type Y and then click Analyze. And you'll see that the average volume of this song is minus 7.31 dB on the left and minus 7.46 dB on the right. Now... You can see that the volume or the average volume, the loudness of contemporary music over the years has gotten louder and louder. From the mid 70s at about minus 20 to modern day masters coming out at about minus 7 dB. Now, you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you that th these numbers, even at minus 7 dB, are fairly low. A lot of the music I'm seeing from rock bands and hip hop bands and R&B acts, heavy metal, are coming in at minus 6 and sometimes even minus 5 and minus 4. 4 dB, which means there's only 4 decibels of difference between the softest and the loudest. And that just doesn't leave a lot of room for expression with volume. Instead, it's just a wall of volume. And to me, a constant wall of volume doesn't sound very musical, but it's all about what the client asks for. If a client asks me to master their music to minus 4 dB below zero, I'll go ahead and do that. But in my opinion, the music Music is sounding worse. So when I'm talking about the loudness war, I'm daring you to be neutral. In other words, you're going to be Switzerland as far as this war goes. You're not going to take sides. Yes, you do need to make the music loud because other music that's on the radio and on CDs is already so loud. But I'm daring you to not crush all the life out of it with a mastering limiter. Try and retain some of the dynamic range. Basically, you're going to use your ears to determine what average or RMS volume is right for your music or the music of your client. Because music needs dynamics to communicate with the listening audience. In other words, remember how Spinal Tap's amps weren't on 11 the whole time? They just turned it up to 11 at the very, very end when it just needed a little bit more oomph? Well, in the world of digital audio mastering, there is a magic number like 11. That number is zero. If you exceed the volume level of zero dB, you're distorting 
the music. So you never want to go above zero dB because you just can't. All you can do is increase the average volume as loud as your client says to. So I try to tell all of my clients to leave some of the dynamic range in their music because I think the music sounds better. Now, you may have a different opinion, and nobody's right and nobody's wrong. Now, what happens if my client asks, you know, hey, what if my master isn't loud enough? What if we don't crush all the life out of it with a mastering limiter? What if it isn't loud enough? Well, in the next video, I'm going to share a secret with you, so you won't want to miss this.